Have you ever seen somebody's profile on Catholic Match and thought, wow, they look perfect? But then you scroll down and you see that they've been married and divorced before. Should it give you pause? Well, I say yes and no. Let's talk about the yes part. I remember when I lived up in the northern part of California in the Bay Area where San Francisco is and on the airport one day there was a huge crash. Asiana Airlines missed the runway and I remember watching the headlines in the newspaper uh, the next few days. Uh, first of all they got everybody to immediate safety but then over the next few days the FAA came out with their team of forensic high-paid experts and took a long time to sort through the rubble of the wreckage. Primarily to find out was, was the crash caused by something in the very beginning at the factory level, or was it pilot error? And that's what we need to do after a divorce or any huge trauma that we go through in life, is go through the wreckage. Take the time. Nobody wants to do that. It's painful. But we have to find out what happened, because as the FAA is doing it so that it won't happen again, we also want to take a look at why we got divorced so it doesn't happen again. We all know that the statistics say that second and third marriages have extremely high, high failure rates. And that's because in all my years of working with the separated and divorced, I know it's one, one reason. And that's because they don't take the time to go through the painful wreckage and ask, what did I do? How did this happen? Because I don't want it to happen again. So, Somebody on that perfect profile may have been somebody who just dusted themselves off and went back up on Catholic Matt shortly after the divorce and is out there looking again. That's the kind of person that you're going to have problems with in, in a relationship. They haven't done the work to do the healing. But there's ways of figuring out if this is the kind of person you're dealing with or not, or somebody who's done the work and actually might be a better future spouse than they were before because of what they've learned and the healing and the growth that they've experienced. So let's look at five things that might make somebody who's been through divorce an even better spouse. Number one, they've faced rejection and failure and pain and suffering, and all of that has brought about a greater humility. Humility is a virtue that we all need. It's the counter to our selfishness. And selfishness in any relationship is the, is the downfall of the relationship. So humility is a built-in buffer to being a selfish person. And it's a virtue. It's not, not that you were beat down and broken and you were a victim. Not, that's not humility. Humility is, I'm a creature. I'm a beloved son or daughter of the Lord God. He's my father. He loves me. And I went off and kind of did things my own way. Um or the other person did, and, and I couldn't help it. Um, but now I'm going to stick with God's way. I'm going to not be self-led in that regard. I'm going to be spirit-led. So that humility is a beautiful virtue that can come from somebody who's been through divorce. Number two, they've made a searching and fearless moral inventory. And this is a phrase I use from the 12-step programs. I love it. They've made a searching and fearless moral inventory of their part in things, what they didn't see, what they did see, what they ignored, what they did wrong. They've been to confession. They've been through the annulment process. The annulment process forces them to do that FAA, searching through the rubble thing of their past and, and how the marriage failed. So, because the church, like the FAA, doesn't want them to suffer this crash again. So, They've come up with a deep sense of self-awareness of, of really what happened and the principles that, that they didn't follow or they did or they're recommitted to. Number three, they've learned about some of the sinful and dysfunctional things that go on in relationships that don't work. Um, I think a lot of my coaching clients have admitted to me over the years that in a difficult relationship, um, marriage or otherwise, they were a nag. They were pressuring the other person to take the high path or do the right thing, and all it did was exhaust them and irritate the other person and cause fights. So there's lots of things that they've learned to not nag, to set and enforce boundaries, um, and, and, you know, good, healthy relationship skills. 
through that. So that's that's good. If they bring that to the table, you have a you have a good future spouse. I think the most important thing is that they've they've grown closer to God. If they've done their work and they've become become humble and really looked at their own part in it, they've drawn to him and they've said, "I'm sorry, Lord. I I I went off and did things my way or I didn't pay attention and I'm really recommitted to making you number one. You're my number one relationship. I'm not going to make an idol anymore out of marriage uh, or any relationship. You're number one. I'm your girl. I'm your guy. I'm going to follow you and do it your way. That makes a really good friend, a really good business partner, and a wonderful spouse. So somebody who puts God first, that could be the most beautiful fruit that came from the horrible crash of divorce. And number five, they... They much they they know much more now what authentic love is. Their pie in the sky dreams and some of their romanticism they realize was not the real thing. Um, they know that self sacrificing is is what is behind authentic love, and they are no longer willing to settle for any kind of love that's not like that. And they want to learn how to give that kind of love, and that's beautiful. So. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, you're taking a risk with somebody who's been through civil divorce. Um, but as I said before, you've heard me say this a million times, make sure if it's you that you've got your annulment or that they have been through the annulment process and uh, then they're, they're ready. They're ready for th that part is cleared out. But don't be afraid to engage. Um, you know, I, I'll, we've heard this it's 365 times in scripture is fear not. And I remember when our beloved St. John Paul II stepped out onto the balcony the first day he was elected Pope and said two words, fear not, fear not. God has shown us the way to do things. God has got your back. Uh, nothing so horrible is going to happen that God isn't going to be there for you and help you through it. So take, take a risk if somebody's been through divorce, but ask questions. Be smart. You know, what, ask them, what did you learn about yourself through divorce? What did you learn through the annulment process? What did you learn about the other person? What did you learn about the kind of people that you've always been attracted to? What works and what doesn't work? Is there anything different that you're, that you're going to be doing in a future relationship that, that doesn't work? What did you learn about love? So have those conversations. Fear not. Take a risk and be open because maybe that person who's been through divorce has something beautiful to share with you beautiful to teach you.